Well, what an unbelievable atmosphere. Um, you know, the, the, the crowd and these guys, especially the zoo, have an unbelievable connection. And it's been that way all year. And we are incredibly, incredibly grateful for that. Um, we're grateful for the seniors, uh, the seniors that are in the band, cheerleaders, dance team, zoo, uh, to be able to close this out at home. Uh, our home standoff, I guess, our home stand uh, with an unbelievable win today. Um, really, really proud of my team. I thought our preparation was good. And I thought we really did a great job of executing. Um, to have 27 assists on 32 made field goals and only five turnovers. Um, really happy for the seniors or the graduates, you know, here in our program for all that they've meant. Um, it was an unbelievable moment at the end to get Fish in and then for him to score. Uh, it was emotional for all of us. And I think you saw that and you know what he means. That shows what he means to our program. You know, for Nike to endure what he's endured, you know, for three years, you know, to not be able to play for the first, I think, eight games, find out 56 minutes before the first game, before the Miami game that he could play. Um, and then the next year to tear his ACL and to accept and star in his role this year. For Jamarius, you know, these are guys that are, you know, holdovers. For them to have this moment, man, and to experience the Pete like this, um, is, is really, really cool and grateful for him sticking with us. You know, Greg is a guy that believed uh, and wanted to be a part of something. And then this guy right here, Nelly, you know, I remember sitting in his living room when I went to go see him when we were you know, recruiting him. And I remember, you know, some stuff he and his father said about this program. And they they grew up here and he dreamt of coming here and what he thought, what they thought we could do and what he could do. And to see it like this, that's one of the things I told him when I took him out. You know, it's it's amazing to see the things that we talked about, you know, in your living room, to see that come true. And so really special evening for us, uh, grateful for the win, and uh, look forward to our next one on Wednesday. Nelly so. is the hometown kid. You know, Coach just said it right there. What did tonight mean to you, and how can you put it into words? Uh, <clears throat> it's definitely hard to put into words, but I would say it was just special, man. It meant a lot to me. The crowd was electric. I mean, it's the last time we're going to play here, so it means a lot for us to go out that way for sure. Nelly, you waited a long time to have the opportunity to play in a pit uniform. Now that your your season is over as far as home games at the peak, would you say it lived up to your expectations? For sure. I think that exactly. I mean, tonight I think was a culmination of everything, and I think it just led up to all of this, and it was very, very special. Nelly, you've played three games in your career against Syracuse, going back to Colgate, and you've kind of just dominated them in all three. I mean, what's the secret, and, and what do you think can you point to that gives you that success point against the team like Syracuse? <clears throat> Two great coaching staffs that had me prepared to go out there and do what I did. Nelly, how important was playing offense and transition today for you guys? I think it was very important. I think uh, they run a zone, obviously, so when they set the zone, you're kind of locked into whatever they, whatever that defense uh, allows you to get. But when you're in transition, you can kind of get what you want and take control of the game in that way. Blake, you you didn't start today. Obviously, Nike got to start in your spot. I mean, what's it say about a, you know a team where you're you're willing to go on the come off the bench and give a guy like Nike that start on senior day and you know let him have his moment? Uh, Nike, what Nike does and has been doing for this program is like one of the most unselfless things I've maybe ever seen, experienced like firsthand. And um, truth of the matter is he would start on most teams in this country, in my opinion. And he's willing to accept the role of not doing that for our team, for the betterment of his team. And that just that's just embodies of what this team is about and what he's about. And I mean, he totally deserves it, man. And um. So I mean, that's that's just what it is, you know what I mean. He would start everywhere else. So if we just have a, you know, coach did a good job selling the talent, and that's what um his role is for us. So that's that's what he deserves. That's what he gets. What was it like mobbing mobbing uh, fish after he made that bucket after the game? 
I've never done nothing like that. That was probably the most fun thing I ever did in my life. Pure adrenaline. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Blake, did Coach approach you about putting Nike in the starting line? I know senior day, but did he approach you about that, or did you, did you have input in that at all? Of course he told me, yeah. Blake, I think you started your relationship with the zoo from the first exhibition game. What, what has that been like, and how much do you appreciate the sport they've shown this year? The, every, Oakland Zoo, man, that was... Uh, in the history of the Oakland Zoo, I, I don't know if there was anything and that has to match what it, what the best has been, or maybe even better, man. That was that was everything. That was great, that, and we appreciate it so much, man. Yeah, I even had people part of my family was telling, make sure you tell that crowd in that Oakland Zoo they did an amazing job. So shout out to you guys, six man of the year. That's y'all. Now, right, right around the point when you guys were going to halftime. Florida State hit a buzzer beater to beat Miami. Did you guys see that score at halftime, like when you were back in the locker I know they announced it on after you came back out, but did you guys see that in the locker room? No, we were really kind of just focused on our game at halftime. We didn't really even have a chance to think about what was did going on. I didn't hear it. They said I they did hear it, but I, I was trying to act like I didn't hear it. But I swear I, I to God, I didn't hear it. <laughs> like, what, what's the significance for 1,000 points for you? That was great. I didn't know it until I got in, um, into the locker room. And um, just being around my friends and stuff that I started college with, they always post their 1,000 points on Instagram. And I always wonder in the back of my head, like, where am I at in that scale? Like, I never, I, like, I don't know. I don't even know. You know, I transferred a couple schools, so I'm like, has that stat just been broken off? Do we know, like, where I'm at? But so it was cool to finally be like, okay, I'm there. So, yeah, that was great to know. Nelly, what went into the preparation? You got the 27 assists, only five turnovers, but also forcing 11 turnovers on the other side from that I think we were just really focused on, I mean, getting the ball to the middle of the zone and making plays out of that. And then defensively, we were just locked in on the scouting report, really just executing everything the coaches told us. Nelly, I, I'm sure you guys are aware of what their coach said a couple of weeks ago about this team and how they operate. Were, were any of those comments fuel for you guys today a little bit extra? No, I mean, every game we we play, we kind of approach it the same way. And want to know, we always want to come out of the game, want to know. So this game didn't have any extra juice on it. We just was locked in. Blake, do you have anything to add to that? No. Jeff, did you feel like this was, if not the best, one of the best displays of what you guys were able to play in your element? Well, I thought it's one of them. I thought Northwestern was the other. I, I, I thought we did an unbelievable job of attacking the zone. And in the second half, we made shots. We got shots in the first half. We just didn't make them. I was pleased that we were able to put some stops together at the end of the first half to give us a lead. And one of the things we talked about in the uh, at halftime, <clears throat> excuse me, was just that keep taking those shots, keep moving it. Let's get some stops. We'll make shots this half, and we did. But our guys did a great job of attacking the zone, of understanding the points where we wanted to attack. Um, and when you make shots, it, it makes everything look better. Yeah, you guys had a huge day on the offensive glass. I think it's the most offensive rebounds you've had against any ACC opponent this year. How big was that in you know, allowing you guys to hang around in the first half? Until those it was huge. Came? It was huge. It's something we talked about. We emphasized in practice and scouting and walk through that those opportunities would be there. Um, with the way that we've shot the basketball, we, we knew the zone could maybe, could maybe be a little bit more extended, and especially the way we shot it against them up at Syracuse. And I think we had 14 offensive rebounds when we were at Syracuse, um, or 12 or something like that. But we felt like we would be able to do that. That kept us afloat in the first half when we couldn't make a shot. Um, and so really proud of our guys for doing that. Did your, defense make the, did your defense make the kind of improvements that you were hoping for? We did OK. I mean, in some ways, yeah. They had a guy. I mean, Benny Williams was unbelievable today. I mean, he. He made five threes. I'm not sure how many threes he had made coming in. Um, yeah, it was 10, exactly. And so he was a guy we wanted the help off of, and he made us pay for that. Um, look, they're a good offensive team. I mean, Judah Mintz is a really good offensive player. Gerard's a really good offensive player. Edwards is a really good offensive player. And when they get that production from Benny Williams, who hasn't been a good offensive player, but he made shots today, that makes them even more dangerous. Jeff, you guys edged Syracuse and all the hustle stats, the offensive rebounds, the second chance, the bench, and everything. <coughs> How much does that add up to eventually what became that huge run you guys went on in the second half? Well, it's huge. Again, we wanted to get extra possessions, so the offensive rebounds gave us that. We, we try to have a, 
one of the things we want as a goal for our program is any 50-50 ball, any ball on the floor, it should be ours. Um, and we did a better job as the game went on of doing that. There were some plays in the first half where we had an opportunity to get on the floor, even early in the second half where we had an opportunity that, you know, that we didn't do a good job there. But for the most part, I thought we did a really good job of playing hard. Um, obviously, we played together, we were connected, and uh, we made a lot of shots. Jeff, I know that Greg, we, we talked about this last game, how Greg can quickly get a bad moment out of his mind, but first half he shoots 0 for 5, second half he shoots 5 for 6. What makes it so easy for him and other guys on this team to continue just flipping the switch to get to the playing, making the plays that you guys need? One of the things as a shooter, you know, you, you have to be okay with missing shots as long as they're good shots because it can turn. You always have to think, like, I can make the next one. I can go on a run. One of the things I told Greg at halftime as we were walking back out was do not drop your head and be ready to shoot. Those are my shots. As long as they're good shots, I'll tell you if they're not good shots. Um, and be ready to shoot the ball when it swung to you. And he got into a rhythm in the second half, and he was able to knock him in. Jeff, uh, we've seen Blake all year take shots that – or not good shots sometimes. Well, I mean, <laughs> but you've talked about how he's got yeah. just that. Does he have a different idea of what is in range <laughs> with you? When you what your idea is what's in range versus his? I, I've said over and over, like I, I have learned Blake. And one of the things you have to do as a coach, you have to learn your team. And I've learned with him, you, you got to give him some lead because he can make, and it could be the one that gets him going and gets us going. Um I will tell him at times, slow down. I did that today. Just slow, just let it come to you. Because at times he can go where he's trying to chase it. But I give him some leeway with that. Are those kind of offensive players though fun to coach? They're very fun. If you coach some guys that can make shots, that's that's pretty fun. He, to scored, do that. he scored his thousandth point on that uh, corner three where he had double covered on him. Were you kind of holding your breath during that shot? I don't remember it. <laughs> I don't remember it. I don't remember the defense. Um, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Did Jeff, a lot of coaches don't like their guys to know what's going on in other games. Did you mind that your guys knew that Miami lost? Well, I didn't know. So I didn't I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know until after the game that Miami lost. But they put it that when the scoreboard and they made a big thing about it. Yeah, I mean, I... Nobody I, mentioned it? No. In competition, I don't want to know. I'm trying to focus on us and trying to figure out how we can extend the lead against them. So I'm not really worried about what's going on anywhere else. When Blake started the season, he took a lot more shots on the inside. He would drive to the basket more. And as the season progressed, he became more of a pure three-point shooter. Was that an adjustment that he just made, or did, was that something that you guys talked about over time? Well, we wanted to have more spacing on the floor. Um, and with the way we were playing, we wanted to you know be able to drive and kick um, and then open it up for Federico to rim run uh, off of ball screens to play off penetration. Obviously, when Guillermo's in there, he gives us a little bit different look because he can pop and do some things on the perimeter. I thought Guillermo was unbelievable in the second half, man. I mean, some of the passes he made, you know, rolling to the middle of the zone, getting off of it quick, some of the decisions he made, he blocked the shot. I mean, I thought he was unbelievable in this game. And it's, you know, I'm really, really happy for him because he works his butt off all the time. Jeff, what's your reaction to being in first place with two games left? No reaction, really. I mean, I'm just focused on – I'm happy that we won today. I'll enjoy it. And then we'll start getting ready for these guys. I see me looking up here, you know, trying to check that out, looking at that one back there, trying to see what happens there. Um, again, we'll just enjoy this, and, th and then we'll start getting prepared for the next one. Jeff, I know we picked up two fouls in the first half, but what did you think of your defense's efforts on Judah Mintz, especially early on? He only took three shots to open the game. I thought we did a good job on him in the first half. I thought we did a good job. Look, he's a really good player. He's a really talented offensive player, and he's a difficult shot maker. And he does an excellent job of drawing fouls. Uh, he gets the spots. He's crafty with the ball. He's strong. And the thing that he's done in the last five games is that he shot the basketball well from three. Uh, in the last two, he was six for six. I think over the last five, he's seven for nine from three prior to this game. So that adds another element to his game. He's a really good player. And he's going to be a really good player. Jeff, 
I know that you know your guys said that you know it was the one of the best feelings for it. What was it like, you know, when the when the final horn sounds and you see your guys going to Mom and Aiden after you know what he's been for you guys? Yeah, yeah. I, I actually didn't see it. I just went to go shake hands. I didn't see. I know they were. I saw the reaction when he hit the shot. We all reacted that way. I mean, Fish has meant so much to this program, man. I mean, to start as a as a manager and to earn the right to be a walk on. He has the respect of everyone in that locker room. He's a leader. He's a believer. He's a guy that shows up every day, and he's incredibly grateful and appreciative. And so for him to be able to have that moment, man, for those guys to look for him and for him to, you know, when I saw that ball go through the basket, man, just the energy in the building, the fans, him, his teammates, it was it was one of the most special things that I've ever experienced as a coach. Is it in further embodied the thing you talk about how your team cares about each other? Yeah. I mean, you saw that. You saw that. You know, a guy like that inspires them, and it shows what a great guy he is. But we have some really good guys in our program right now. You spoke about Federico's ability in the half court to rim run and finish down there. How important is he in transition for you guys? He's huge. He's huge because he's a guy we can throw it up to. He can catch and finish. He can catch lobs. And it flattens the defense out. And so it opens things up for other guys. He gets our shooter shots. He opens the floor for drives for us in transition. Um, that's a weapon for us, and it's something we're going to keep keep utilizing. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. All right. All right.